Today is Easter Monday, the 17th of April, 2017. This is Hal in Tyrol. You might never have heard of Hal in Tyrol, but you are going to hear about it now. I'm just pointing this out, actually, because there is a cycle route from Munich to Venice, and it uses the ancient Roman road, the Via Claudia Augusta, and uh, you can see the route it takes from Munich, try to say a bad toll, Hal, where we are now, Innsbruck, over the Brenner Pass, uh, Brixen, um, and then Treviso, Venice. And I wrote an article about it uh, last night, you can see it on my site, uh, www.motorhomefulltime.com. Maybe it's not the sort of thing motorhomers uh, will be doing, or maybe they can, because one partner can drive the van, the other one can cycle. Seems a good idea to me. Anyway, this is Halland at all, which was a very important city for the Habsburgs because here salt was mined. And on my journey through the Alps, I've referred to the salt trade uh, on several occasions. For example, when I visited Jungholz in the Tannheimer Tal, um, in Reuter, the Gleica Pass, I've referred to the salt business several times. And this is the place where it was mined that had this enormous importance. Because obviously salt was something that's needed to keep uh, food fresh. And so it had uh, an importance which is far greater than, than today. That's ironic, isn't it? You know, all this food's got salt in it today. But then it was more important than it is um, now. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, <laughs> there's probably other preservatives now. Anyway, so let's have a look around it and tell you a bit more about this week later. I'll just say a little bit about where I left my van. There was a village before this, and I noticed there's only a couple of kilometres in, so I thought. I'll just leave my van there. In fact, I did go past the place where I could have parked it. There were some cars parked. But, okay, it was within two kilometers of striking distance. So, rather than spend half the afternoon looking for a place to park my van, I took it and walked. As the day's a holiday, the parking would have been free in any case. So I could have brought it in, into the town. It's not just the point of paying for it, paying for parking. It's the point of finding somewhere to park. There's music school, Salt Camp Hall. So you can visit the place where salt used to be mined. Hal is the word for salt in Old German, so that makes sense because some 10 million tons was actually mined from this area. And the first mention of this uh, the castle which was here it was in 827 although people have been living here since the bronze age there was a settlement here uh, about 3,000 years ago and uh, in the mid 13th century the castle underwent extensive remodeling to become the largest castle complex in the Inn Valley now another important thing about Hal is the River Inn and the River Inn is navigable this far, which meant that merchants who were coming from further afield had to sell off their stuff from the uh, uh or then they'd sail back to wherever they wanted or roll back to wherever they were going. And in turn, this would be sold on to other people here who would then take it further. So it became an important 
trading place, which can explain some of the wealth of the town in medieval times. We can see there a sign to the mint. In fact, the Archduke Sigismund, Sigismund moved the mint here from Murano in 1477. In 1486, a, a gulden was uh, produced here, which is possibly where the word dollar comes from. The Hal M Gulden? Well, does that sound like dollar? It doesn't really to me, but uh, that's how the story goes. Maybe it was sort of pronounced differently then. Now, they used silver, which was produced in the nearby town of Schwaz. Initially, the mint was in the old town, but then it was moved into the fortified Hassig Castle. That took place in 1567. And the mint tower is the highest tower in the castle, which could be seen from afar and became a symbol of power and riches, as you would expect, of course, not only for Tyrol, but, but and people in passing. Anyway, so you can go there and see the museum if you're so interested. And you saw the sign for it a little earlier. There are a number of fountains around town. Salvador Gassa. And this was named after the church, which is down here. So you can see the church. This is Gothic steeple. Now, obviously, it's Gothic, so it was built later. It was built in 1871. The church itself dates to 1406. It was built from 1400 to 1406 by somebody called Hans Cribb. And he did that because a priest was given the last sacrament to a dying man when the wooden fort law collapsed beneath him. And so Hans thought that was a good reason to build a church. And there it is. So according to this sign, it was built in 1390, but it was renewed, renovated, repaired in 1950, following bomb damage. This place was bombed, as was Innsbruck, during the Second World War, because of it was important as a communications hub. Indeed, Innsbruck was bombed at least 22 times that I know of, and it's a logical place to bomb. The campaign in Italy, most of the supplies are going over the Brenner Pass. What are going to hit? A place where all the supplies go through. So it was a, a logical target. And that was bombed from the airfields in southern Italy. Waldaustrasse, named after one Sir Florian Waldau von Waldenstein, who was an advisor to the Emperor Maximilian I. And he set up a foundation which is still known today. The Waldau Foundation. I came across that a few days ago. Although I can't remember which, in which context it was. Now the foundation paid for the post of a preacher, which was probably pretty good job to have in bygone days. So the Baldau Foundation in 1501 made this the house of the preacher. And there we have St. Nicholas Paris Church, looks more like a cathedral from here. First consecrated in 1281, and obviously got bigger and bigger with the town, and uh, it was completed as a late Gothic hall church in 1430. Tower, the first one put up there collapsed in 1345, due to an, and it collapsed again because of an earthquake. So, to avoid any further problems, they replaced it with an onion dome. Um, 
this is a symbol of the wealth of Hal in bygone times. So no expense has been spared whatsoever with this church. It's a symbol of the wealth that was brought here through the salt business and the trade in general. That's called the Waldorf Madonna and it comes from the school of Michael Patcher. And the roof has been entirely decorated. And up there is a big font as well. out because it's quite dark in here. Come out of the church and you've got this building. This is the town hall. Indeed, the King of Bohemia, Count Heinrich von Goetz, called it his town castle in the uh, 14th century. Habsburg Duke Leopold IV gave the building to the town in 1406 and since then it's been the town hall. In 1447 there was a fire, I thought it needed to be rebuilt. I'm always going about fires in medieval times. But it's still used for that purpose. And apparently it's quite ornate inside. There's a bit of information here. So I shall read this to you while pointing the camera at something else. So after Duke Randolph IV of Austria obtained the lordship of Tyrol from the Countess Marguerite on 26th of January 1363, the cities and the majority of the population swore loyalty to him. Just in the Inn Valley, there was an inner conflict because of the change in lordship. Even if the sources do not report any details, it's clear that Rudolf, during his journey through Tyrol, faced a difficult situation in Innsbruck and in Hal especially. However, the loyalty of the citizens, especially those in Hal, saved him from danger. The Duke was very grateful and not only gave special rights to the city of Hal, but he also reconfirmed its privileges. For this reason, the Duke of Rudolf, what would later become an irreversible tendency, started taking shape. Political matters were starting to take place far from the isolated castle and were instead made in the cities. Obviously, being a town hall, it does have to have a cafe as well. There you go, some information about it. It's been town hall since 1406. And from here, it does somewhat look like a castle in the town as it was referred to in the 13th century. I think it's great to think that this building has been in use for such a long time in its original format, even if some new things have been added to it such as this lift and glass staircase. So let's walk back into the main square. So this is the main square, and just off the main square is the salt mining museum I mentioned earlier, and expect this to be pretty full on a day like today, it's a holiday, Easter Monday, but as it sees it's pretty empty, so I think that goes to show that not enough people know about how. Gasse. Arbis is the old German word for peace. So it's Erbsen. 
today. And that tells us, or suggests to us, that peas were once sold in this street. Gasse, the street of the locksmiths. Guarion Gasse pays tribute to a famous local doctor by the name of Hippolyta Guarioni. Some more parking, but you need a pretty small van to park there. Now, Hal is to a certain extent, I think, several of his book are probably get beaten up for that, but by the time he sees this film, might be long gone. And Hal has roughly one tenth the population of Innsbruck, so it's 120,000 people roughly in Innsbruck. There's 12,000 here, something like that. Gasser. And there's the school. So that's what it means. And this takes us into Zifftsplatz. So here we have the military barracks built in 1571 and used as such from 1773 to 1945, right next to the Jesuit church, which was established in 1571, and it ran the school from 1573. So that's the Sacred Heart Convent, home for gentle women. Now the Archduke Franz Ferdinand II's sister, Archduke Archduchess Magdalena, moved into this in 1569 along with her sisters and other noble women. The architecture and center was built by Giovanni Lucchese and was stuck to finish in 1611 and 1691. The emperor had the convent dissolved in 1783 and a major part of the art collection was destroyed. The former home for gentlemen was reopened in 1912 and has been used as a convent ever since. Now I have to say that as I walk around here, there's a definite flavour of Italy about it. Not only in the way it looks, actually, something you can't feel, but I can, not the way it smells, but I've even got the cooking smells as well, which I've never really noticed in Austria before. I haven't spent as much time in Austria as I have in Italy. But I would even say something even more just southern Italy at that. Magdalena, who I mentioned earlier, the sister of the Archbishop of Ferdinand II. This is Ogenstrasse, named after the Archduke Ogen, who visited Hull in 1900 in his capacity as commander of the Tyrol. It had been previously called Bad Strasse because this is where the baths were. Cafe Restaurant, the Black Eagle. There it is with two heads. I miss it around with the studios. So I should put them here.
here on the main road through the town, I suppose, if fair is to say. You can see a good view of the Mint Tower. And uh, the Mint was actually moved to the castle. It was shut down 1809 when the barbarians occupied it. Now, I've talked about the barbarian occupation in the Hellenic times in a film. I did a sort of lecture on Andros Hopper, so I don't know here. So, uh, here another time. Uh, in 1975, coins were minted again and the castle was open to visitors. And there's a Mint Museum since 2003. This is a memorial to Josef Ignaz Strauss, the Tyrolean freedom fighter. And there's dates 1773 to 1850. And this is the road I came in, in, <laughs> along. Asseg Castle, first mentioned in the 13th century, built to protect ships on the Inn River, you know, the salt business and the other business that was going on. And uh, it was called Hasseg because the word egg means corner in Old German, so it was on the corner and that's where it came from. It turned into a royal residence in the 15th century. Archduke Ferdinand II had the mint moved even in 1567 and the St George's Chapel and some more new halls are not open but can still be rented should you so desire and you've got some big do on that you want to celebrate in a place like this. I'll just mention this here, which uh, refers to the nice sites which are on the uh, Convention concerning the protection of the world cultural and natural heritage. And so that's the UNESCO World Heritage List. And so there you go, Hal's here. These nine in uh, Austria. Hal is a candidate, the uh, historic center of Salzburg. We've got the prehistoric pile dwellings around the Alps, uh, Halstatt Dachstein, uh, Salzkammergut. I'll show you where that is. There we go. I'll be heading in that general direction, although uh, not quite there. Um, Wachau, cultural landscape, Semmering Railway, Vienna, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Schönbrunn, which is also in Vienna. And um, Ferto Neusiedlerse uh, here, which is, uh, I believe, that's a uh, breeding ground for spoonbills and so that sort of thing, rest of me. And the Eggenberg Castle down there. So a little plug there for Hal, one of the UNESCO uh, World Heritage List. That's them. Minting Hall or Coin Hall. Got the car park there next to that's the tourist information. Obviously it's closed today, but when you need it, it's closed. And I'm going to head back now to my van. I'm very glad I came here. 
I planned to come here, it wasn't an accident. Often it's an accident when I go somewhere, but today it wasn't. And from here, I shall go to a couple of villages en route. But I'm, in general, I'm heading east. I'm standing on the bridge is not the best place to stand for a few last thoughts, but the first thing that, first of my last thoughts that comes into my mind is it's uh, pretty amazing that um, transport barges could get this far upriver uh, because it certainly doesn't seem very deep. You can see down there the uh, rapids, the white water showing that it's not deep at all. And I mentioned the um, Archduke Sigismund who moved the mint from Murano to uh, here in 1477. But the more I think about this, I think this was a pretty uh, clever idea because the silver was minted uh, in that direction in Schwaz. And as gold no longer had to be imported, this led to the economic upswing uh, not only for how, but also for all of Tyrol. And the coins that were used would have had the names of the princes, the archdukes and whoever else was on it, throughout the world. So this would have been a very good thing to actually promote the region, if you like. Uh, propaganda potential of the time. And then when you think of the mint being moved to there, and that really does stand out. So, it's something, a anyway, little thing there to think about. I, I've heard it said, I mentioned about the dollar, I've even heard it suggested that in some ways the Archduke Sigismund was a, uh, um, a precursor to the Euro, or somebody who uh, brought it. Uh, maybe that, I mean, that's going too far, the coins weren't that widely used, but they were used quite a bit, and not just in the Tyrol. And I think that's something worth thinking about, as I leave Hal, and on my way elsewhere.